Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to wrap up the last seven days worth of reading and this one is going to be a fairly short wrap up because a lot of the things that I read this week are either part of vlogs or are review titles that I'm trying to get ahead of that will be reviewed in next week's weekly wrap up just because of release dates. I also sound a bit rough because it, it's been a rough kind of week in terms of hay fever and head colds and all sorts of things and my asthma is now being a pain in the neck so <laughs> we're just going to try and model through. I'm going to start off with two junior fiction graphic novels by Sean E. Avery. It is the Ducky the Spy series which I'd seen recommended and reviewed in a couple of places as something that kids really enjoyed. So the first one is Expect the Unexpected and the second one is Pumpkin Patch Panic which I read because obviously it's Halloween season. So these are very simple graphic novels, very large pictures. There's still a bit of text but it's not a huge amount of text and it's fairly simple. We have Ducky who believes that they are an excellent spy. They find themselves in all kinds of mischief when they're asked to complete tasks and it turns out that maybe Ducky is not as accomplished a spy as one would think and that perhaps Ducky might actually be behind quite a few of the disasters that happen throughout the series. The first story is about the fact that there is a thief on the farm and Ducky is tasked with trying to track down who the thief is. The thief is stealing food from the farmer. And the second story is about a giant pumpkin that Ducky is asked to look after that ends up being destroyed. And so Ducky has to set out to try and replace said giant pumpkin and ends up on a bit of an adventure. This is one of those series that's clearly written for kids. It's not my kind of humour, but it was, it's something that I can see a lot of kids really enjoying just because it's like that slapstick kind of silly humour. The illustrations are really cute and fun and it definitely has that appeal for a younger audience. So even though it's not necessarily for me, I I have a bunch of students who are going to love this. Then the next thing I'm going to talk about is the fanfic that I was reading. So I talked about it a little bit last week. This is What Are Your Intentions by Screamlet, which is on AO3 and it is a 911 Buck and Tommy fanfic. This is my 2024 version of the rest of the story. I love this story. It is 130,000-ish words long. It is it is long and so last week I think I talked about it it wasn't quite finished and over the weekend and at the start of the week the last few chapters were released I actually started rereading it from the start before those chapters came out and <laughs> I'm already halfway through it again because it is now going to be a comfort read for me because it is just utterly delightful. I think I did mention you know there's been like less than 20 minutes of these two characters on screen in the last season and I still can't see season eight and you know they've had maybe two minutes, not even, in that entire episode together. And they are probably not endgame. They're probably going to kill off one of the characters because everyone wants another particular pairing. I won't get into that discussion. I have thoughts and feelings on that. However, this, this story is just utterly delightful. So the first couple of chapters of this really mirror what happens in the show, except we're building on things. And the whole thing is told from Tommy's perspective, where he's not really considered a main character. In the show he's kind of been a supporting cast member and this relationship is Buck's bisexual awakening kind of story in storyline in the show and just the way that it has been written and the way that they just have captured the character voices so well and not just the two characters of the story but all of the surrounding characters so the other characters for the show but also these original characters that have been built in as sort of Tommy's friendship network and, and support base and it's just their story as they move from being this very awkward initial relationship because Buck doesn't really know what he's doing into an actual relationship where they have to make decisions and both have to sort of grow into what it is that they want from their relationship it was just delightful and it's a fanfic. So I haven't found anything to top or give me the same kind of feelings as the rest of the story did last year. This fanfic has come the absolute closest. So yes, I will be rereading it whenever I need a comfort read because... I honestly adore it. I'll also probably need it just to console myself when the show does something to break my heart because that's the way that it always goes. All right and then the last two books that I'm going to mention are the second and third books in the Firebird Chronicle series by T.A. White. Heather got me onto this last week and I was able to pick up two more books in the series. These are quite long books. They're all over 400 pages long so I do have to pick my moments when I can actually sit down and just read them because I want to read them from cover to cover because it's just so engrossing. Last week I spoke about them and I said they're basically Kate Daniels in space and that's exactly what it is but it's kind of Kate Daniels mixed with Hidden Legacy in space because you have um, an alien race where there are various houses who have accumulated power and there is a lot of interplay between the, these houses particularly in book two and three. So Kira is our main protagonist and she was rescued when she was quite young from a camp where she was experimented on and so she has been raised amongst humans. She believes she was human but just 
different and then in book one which she found out really what her heritage was and so she was taken back to the homeworld of her mother and things did not quite go according to plan. She is former military so she is very militarily minded and she's always constantly thinking about the next step in any in any situation. She left the military after some traumatic moments and became a scavenger but what we find out in book two and three is it's not as simple as that and so we get a lot more of that backstory and why she chose the path that she chose and in book two because of what happened in book one she's now in the safekeeping of her father's family. Both her parents were killed when she was quite young that's why she was taken and so she's starting to unravel sort of her personal history, the relationship between her parents, the relationship between her father and his house and the politics involved and along the way she's also being trained in the way of her people so while she may have been trained as in the human military she doesn't really know how to use her actual abilities to the best extent and in fact some of those abilities are killing her and so she is really navigating sort of that. So that's Age of Deception and then book three is Threshold of Annihilation and in this one a big secret comes out because she's also still connected with some of her former teammates and she's been keeping secrets from them as well and one of those is revealed and she ends up accidentally escaping from her father's homeworld, which she was always planning on doing, but not in this particular way. And so she's rapidly recalculating how to actually achieve what she needs to achieve. And everyone involved ends up at this treaty signing between multiple races within the galaxy. And of course, along the way, they're still fighting their, their common enemy who is still infiltrating everything. And it's just very captivating and very fast paced. Kira is a great character because she is constantly underestimated by everyone. She's intelligent but she makes mistakes but often her mistakes are because other people have made other moves that have then complicated what she had put in place and people are still constantly underestimating that she can recalculate and adapt to whatever situation she is in and that she has more knowledge than she actually does. There's a lot she doesn't know but there's also a lot that she does and that she can use and apply in any situation. Grayson is the love interest and he is a really fascinating character because at first in the first book we're kind of led to believe initially that he's going to be a very stoic very serious kind of character at least in the first part of the book and it's not he has quite a bit of personality despite the fact that he holds a very high position and a very important position where he is basically the the right hand of the leader of his people and that his job is to carry out and basically represent the law for them and yet with Kira he recognizes a like-minded spirit he sees her as a challenge but not a challenge to try and change her as a, a challenge in that he wants to try and convince her that you know they would be good together like that that's the challenge and like he is very much an alpha character but it's not that he's overbearing and over the top he is just very good at his job and his job has always been protecting people so I like their dynamic I like all of the side characters that we've been introduced to we got to find out more about Jin and his history Jin is Kira's companion who is an AI but was formerly a person we start to get more information about how that came about so yeah I think the world is building really really well there's two more books out and the sixth book won't be out until next year I think that this series would make a really delightful read-along so that that could be on the cards next year later next year not at the start of next year uh, if I can convince people to uh, join me because I would like to do a reread once book six is out and I'm not even finished the series yet or what's currently out yet so that always says something. But anyway, that is my wrap up for this week. It's short and sweet because yeah, there's other books that I will, will be talking about, but we're going to talk about them a little bit later. Yeah, in the comments, I'd love to know if you've read any of these things or if you're planning on picking any of them up. I'll leave a list of everything down below as well as the link to the fanfic. I did link it last week, but I'll link it again. If you want to let me know that you're here, but you don't want to leave a comment, we'll freely leave a star emoji. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you are in the world, just staying safe and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everyone.